the overall medical legal investigative system. So you do that, and uh, then you either feel comfortable in signing the case out then and there, if your findings are definitive and uh, unequivocal, uh, or you pen the case until you get back toxicological um, test results and maybe uh, further information, uh, homicide detectives, um, you may want to learn more. You could even have a case where the cause of death, and this is not rare at all, not at all rare, where the cause of death is, uh, is unquestionable, a gunshot wound of the head, for example. The question is the manner of death. You see, uh, we have five manners of death on ME coroner death certificates that doctors and hospitals do not have. If a doctor or a hospital signs out a patient um, and fills out a death certificate, there's no place that says check off manner of death. It is assumed, it is implied by virtue of that <clears throat> death certificate being utilized that it is a natural death, which gets back to what I said a couple of minutes ago. Anything but a pure, clear, unquestionable natural death uh, should be, by definition, a coroner or medical examiner's case. So the coroner ME, there are five manners of death with little blocks on the death certificate. And going down in a decreasing order of uh, frequency of occurrence, natural, accident, suicide, homicide, or a fifth one uh, pending, undetermined, where you're just not sure. So going, going to my gunshot wound of the head case, we know what killed him, the gunshot wound of the head and extensive damage to the brain and multiple fractures of the skull. We don't know for sure, maybe, was it a homicide, was it an accident, or was it a suicide? Three possibilities, right? Right. Uh, say you find somebody in a car, in a garage, with carbon monoxide. There's no note, there's no hookup uh, to the exhaust system, and so on. So cause of death is quite clear. He's uh, a bright uh, cherry red. You do a fast uh, carbon monoxide test, you get a 75% reading. There's no question about that. But uh, And you do the autopsy and rule out uh, uh, anything that may have caused him to be rendered unconscious, and so on. But you still don't know for sure what, was it was it an accident or was it suicide or in some instances it could possibly have been a a staged homicide so um, that's that's what happens and that's the way the process works and that's the way a good medical legal investigative system functions. How many times in your life with all of the cases that you've been not only consulting on but the autopsies that you've performed did you find a politic? inside the process with law enforcement where you felt like everybody wasn't on the same page with respect to desiring the truth of the information like you were? You mean because of uh, political? Well, or, maybe or agenda. Or, or, yeah, or maybe, maybe law enforcement felt like they had already come to a conclusion oh, early on. Just, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Well, um, that is, is not rare. I'm not, I wouldn't say it's frequent, but it is not rare. And that's an excellent question, observation that you make, because what we encounter in this business, um, indeed, are the prejudices and the egos of uh, different groups and different people and so on. And this is something that has to be constantly fought against, uh, that I've been hammering this for 45 years in talks to my colleagues and papers I've written that, number one, you are a forensic scientist, you're not a policeman. And number two, you have to maintain objectivity and your personal, political, uh, social, philosophical beliefs uh, should not come into play. And you just uh, look at those things, uh, not in a dispassionate, uh, cold, heartless fashion, but um, with a, a sense of, of objectivity, uh, just as a any kind of a scientist should approach a problem. So the answer to your question is yes. Many times, um, as I say, um, uh, taking it uh, out of the uh, realm of rarity. Um, so I mean, it's it's you know it's it's not frequent, but uh, you know <laughs> it's it's not uh, terribly infrequent either that. Somebody makes up their mind in advance. It could be the family. They're darn certain about something, and they may have their own reasons, conscious or subconscious, um, um, surreptitious, clandestine, 
um, uh, malevolent cover-up or just uh, uh, ignorance uh, or um, religious uh, beliefs exaggerated um, in their minds uh, and so on uh, that um, try to push for something or the other. And then and the police become involved. And there, there, you know, there are uh, prejudices, um, conscious and subconscious. There are beliefs, and there are uh, what has offended me greatly uh, over the years, uh, too many times in which police make up their minds prematurely. Uh, they, <clears throat> they, they are in a, a rush to judgment, and they uh, just uh, go ahead and, and push. And now we come to the coroner ME, to the forensic pathologist. Um, it's up to you as the forensic pathologist, the forensic scientist, uh, to be sufficiently uh, courageous, uh, to be sufficiently uh, ethical, moral, uh, and professionally responsible uh, to reject uh, that kind of premature judgment and to say, whoa, you know, just take it easy, or to express the differences. I've had cases like that over the years, and then you have to deal with the homicide detectives. You know, you uh, then one of the, frankly, one of the professional pitfalls of our field is that too many forensic pathologists in coroner and ME offices become too buddy buddy uh, with uh, cops, homicide detectives, and district attorneys, and that is not right. The National Academy of Science put out a fantastic report in February 2009, and uh, they talk about these things, and they they strongly advocate something that I've been talking about for 45 years, not that they plagiarized it from me, uh, nor was I the first and the only person uh, to have promulgated this, but I um, sometimes was a lonely voice in the wilderness uh, pointing out that uh, ME, coroner's offices, forensic science laboratories, uh, called the still colloquially crime labs, that they should be separate and apart from, autonomous of, a law enforcement agency or a district attorney prosecutor's office. This is a National Academy of Science report, the most prestigious organization of scientists in the world. Uh, and they, 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 I was th- so thrilled when I received uh, that report and read it. I remember uh, it was around February 18th, February 19th, quite fortuitously, um, ironically, at the annual meeting of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences, where I was presenting a, uh, uh, a paper uh, with some colleagues. And uh, that report came out, and we referred to it, uh, I remember, that evening. So um, that is something that has to be watched for. And uh, quite frankly, in my business as a consultant, I, uh, I am very active as a forensic pathologist. I do about 350 autopsies myself every year for coroners in counties surrounding Allegheny County, Pittsburgh. And then I do private autopsies for families and attorneys. And then I do medical legal consultations in civil and criminal cases. And um, 95% uh, uh, Ninety-eight percent of those cases uh, are death cases, and it's just amazing. So often, I'm not talking about stupidity uh, or saying that I'm some great, uh, brilliant uh, forensic scientist that comes up with things that nobody else sees. It's not that. It's a matter of interpretation, and it's a matter, as I've said before, of sometimes rushing to judgment for one reason or the other. Uh, think of the uh, case out there in California recently, um, Rebecca Zahal, a woman found hanging outside uh, the second floor of this mansion, multimillionaire boyfriend's mansion in Coronado. And, uh, and she was um, hanging out there. Her hands were tied behind her back in a slipknot arrangement. Her calves were tied, um, and a rope encircled her neck. Uh, and then overlying the rope, uh, her T-shirt uh, three times stuffed into her mouth, and she was completely naked. Um, so, you know, it didn't take long for them to say, ah, this is a suicide. Well, it may or may not be a suicide. I've never said that it absolutely was not a suicide, but I've raised a lot of questions, which I uh, won't get into right now in detail, but questions which have not been answered. But there's a good example of what I'm talking about, 
uh, the medical examiner and the, uh, the cops and everybody and the sheriff out there, they... Uh, <laughs>